Back in May, we gave you our top nine and three quarter reasons that we wanted to attend this year's UK Games Expo. It's nine and three quarter reasons because we're too classy to stoop to doing top ten lists. The link is in the description if you want to watch that video. It sure was big. Every year they seem to add another hall at the NEC and are up to three, plus all of the Hilton Hotel. We were promised RPGs, spaceship simulators, card game tournaments, playtesting, miniatures, awesome food trucks, and even Vikings. There were indeed all of the above. FFG had a massive organised play hall which hosted a grand Kotai tournament for Legend of the Five Rings, drawing players from all over the place, and they all brought their amazing tokens, sleeves, playmats, accessories and snazzy outfits. There were non-stop Keyforge events with an awesome prize wall allowing you to cash in your ember shards for cool swag, including the excellent quiver case which you saw first on this very channel. There was Game of Thrones, X-Wing, Armada, and for the first time ever, there were even Arkham Horror the card game events. There were plenty of incredible looking miniatures games represented, and surprisingly, Games Workshop were front and centre, running demos and showing off their new contrast paints. The playtest area was bigger than ever, and filled to the brim with attendees willing to give up their time to maybe discover the next big thing. And of course, there were Vikings, who returned every year in their annual hunt for spam. There were plenty of familiar faces that you may have seen or heard from YouTube channels and podcasts. Some just wandering around the halls and some having their own live shows. Every year the UK Games Expo tells you how easy it is to stay off site and commute in. And every year we are too scared to do so. Until this year. One of our chaps stayed in Coventry and the other in Birmingham City Centre. And it was generally less than 15 minutes on the train to get in from either. With several trains per hour. But, as you can't rely on the trains to run on time in any country, make sure you travel early, as on two occasions we were delayed. Oh, and if your hotel seems really cheap, then it will be really cheap. Boy, do we have some hotel horror stories from that weekend. With exhibitors from all over the world, it was certainly easy to buy, buy, buy. And with Outer Rim, Tomb Raider and Zombicide all on sale before their street dates, wallets were emptied with alarming speed. As predicted, discounts escalated as the show went on, with 10 and 20% off being the norm as retailers didn't want to load up mountains of stock and drive it home. There was even some creative push your luck discounting. This was bigger and crazier than in previous years and we may do a separate video on it, as it is such a fascinating spectacle. The Games Quest Shop and Drop was like a cloakroom for games, with £3 getting you a massive storage box to dump stuff in all day long. This was a huge success, selling out more than 200 boxes first thing Friday and Saturday, with Sunday almost as crammed. A new service at the show was the Pack and Post system offered by Games Law. For a flat fee, they would ship up to 20 kilos of stuff back to your house in most European countries. They did about a dozen boxes per day, with the majority going to UK and Ireland. If you didn't want to leave the halls, there was food in the exhibition centre, and booze too! There was even convention food outside the main NEC entrance if you wanted to go and sit outside in the lovely weather. No, not that lovely weather. There were additional food places within the exhibition centre itself, and a subway everywhere you looked. But the stars of the show are always the food trucks, which are the same every year. This is what we spend our bring and buy money on. Every penny we earn goes on premium grub. These are about the same prices as the food within the exhibition centre, but their quality is exceptional. These are artisan style meals. There are artisan style portions too. If you bought a hot dog or a burger, there isn't the option of fries or a side. This is a great way of stopping you picking out and needing a nap. If you went out of the lunch and dinner times, there was no queue, but if you went straight after the trade hall closes, like everyone else, well, that was silly, wasn't it? There were lots of opportunities to play with new people, from tournaments and demo games to open gaming. We didn't spot the Mega Civilization, but the Watch the Sky second sight was amazing. The components were all high quality, and the intimate space made sure it was easy to find and talk to other people. The dim lighting was quite atmospheric, but really lousy for photography. Most of the people attending looked to be new to Mega Games, and this would be a fantastic way to start. Plus, 
than a flyer detailing upcoming mega games all over the country, which is an awesome idea. On Friday night, we were special guests of Everything Epic to play the prototype of their Blood Feud Mega Board Game, which is a board game for 4 to 32 players that you play in factions of up to 4 per team, with each player dedicated to one of the 4 different roles. The components were board game quality, and it was run by just a single member of control staff. It was a highly concentrated experience, taking less than 2 hours, and was very intense. Here at the Arkham Chronicle, we don't cover products that we don't actually have in our hands, so we aren't sure what kind of video we will make about this, or if we'll wait till the game is actually available on Kickstarter or retail. Let us know your suggestions in the comments below, please. There were tons of these, and we would love to have attended all of them, but we just didn't have time. The show is so vast now that to get around all 350 companies and the organised play means we can't stop, much as a sit down in a darkened room appeals to us. We were in on the Shut Up and Sit Down live recording, and it was hilarious! Check out their podcast when it drops. No, not the Deadpool minions, they aren't new! Like the awesome fact the Hilton Hotel has electric vehicle charging points, or Northern Railway stations are lit by lantern and have cookie stands, or the fact that the Games Expo merchandise range has grown exponentially, with playmats, foldable dice trays, sturdy game bags, and best of all, a water bottle, which you can fill up for free all day long at the entrances to each hall. And how about this very odd vending machine? Speaking of weird stuff, take a look at these oddities. They look like bronze, but are actually cleverly painted plastic. The double decker bus was back along with a new minivan, and there is a game where the components are actually cushions, plus new material for the SLA Industries RPG, after about 20 years. And you just can't beat a good mystery box, eh? Plus you could get your face scanned and be made into your own miniatures. Please allow 28 days for delivery, or something like that. And this blurry photo doesn't do the amazing puppet show antics of this freaky spectacle justice. Dice wise, there were plenty of amazing ones from new visitor Foam Brain Games, going all the way up to £350. Their best sellers were these super amazing rainbow dice. And if you just can't decide on dice colours, D and Dice have got you covered with random mystery packs. They created 300 for the show, and they were all gone by Sunday. Do you love buy one get one free? Well, your UK Games Expo ticket allowed you entrance to the film and comic con opposite. How is that for value for money? If only we had the time. We were very excited to see a preview of the Pacific Rim Miniatures game, plus Oathsworn, which is a Kingdom Death Gloomhaven style narrative campaign game. It has push fit minis, so no trimming and gluing required, which means we won't need a grown up to help us. It definitely gets the golden Pikachu from us. And if only the Robotech games had arrived in time for the show, we might be excited about those too. Special mention to this awesome game here, which looked like tons of fun. If you like the sound of UK Games Expo, then the next one is Friday the 29th of May to Sunday the 31st of May 2020. Now we are back from the show, it's time to go through the mountain of business cards and see what we can put in front of the camera next. If there is anything you want us to cover, particularly accessory wise, then do let us know. But not the Warhammer colouring books though. Hello, what's this? This isn't a business card, it's some kind of laser cut thing. It looks like a standee for a role playing game. It just pops out like so, and slots into the base. Isn't that neat? Do you reckon you can put it back? You can! Much more convenient to store than a load of miniatures. We should probably ask if they do 1920s figures. Thanks to the UK Expo staff and volunteers for doing an amazing job, and making sure we had a fantastic time. 